Street photography is very exciting. It can be done in many ways. In this video, I will talk about three ways of approaching street photography. Hi, it's Peter here. Before we get into those different approaches, let's talk about what is street photography. Street photography is photography for art or inquire that features unmeditated chain encounters and random incidents within public places. Simplifying this, street photography is about recording random incidents in public. What is a street photographer? A street photographer can be seen as an extension of a flaneur, an observer of the streets. Public places and observing are the main things. Traditionally, in street photography, a photographer does not interfere with what is happening. These things would happen even if the photographer were not there to record them. So the saying, JPEG or it did not happen, does not apply. And then let's talk about the approaches. The first one is the action shooter. You walk around and react to things that happen by photographing them. That requires fast reflexes to catch the action. It also requires the camera settings to be ready. There's not much time to adjust the exposure settings. Even though modern cameras have a fast AF, manual focus and pre-focusing can be very good. And a tip, set the aperture f5.6 or f8 and the focus around 4 meters and everything will be in focus. No focus needed. This approach is one of that most use. We walk around and look for incidents. For this to be successful, you need to think ahead while walking, observe people and pre-visualize and think about what might happen. Then you're ready if it happens. The timing is essential. Click the shutter when things are happening. Sometimes what happens just before or after can be more enjoyable. Do not stop photographing when you think the incident is over. There might be another one right after. And then the second one is the observer. The second approach is the observer approach. The way it goes, you see something and wait for something to happen. The most common way is to wait for someone to enter the frame. The technique is to frame the shot and wait, have everything ready and click the shutter when something happens. A tip. Shoot one eye open. Even though the camera is unimportant, there are some benefits if you have a camera with the AVF on the side. Seeing what happens around you is easier if you have your other eye open. That is why I have trained my right eye looking through the viewfinder. I have my left eye for observing. One way of doing this is waist level shooting using LCD. Observing the surroundings at the same time might not be that easy. After the third approach, I will discuss my approach to street photography. No people street photography. A street photograph does not have to have people in it, even though having people in them is the most common approach. No people street photography is a good approach if you feel intimidated photographing people in public. Usually there must be some traces of human in a street photograph. That can also be stretched. I do not personally like when forms of art are too tightly defined. The whole point of art and creativity is just that it does not have any rules. The gear and settings. Before I talk my approach, a few words about the gear. Any camera is fine. Some are better and more convenient than others. But the camera plays a very small role in street photography. Any lens can be used, but a wide angle or a standard lens is traditionally preferred. My favorite focal length for street photography is 20mm in my OM system, OM5. That would be around 27 in an APS-C sensor and a 40mm in a full-frame camera. What is your favorite focal length for street photography? Tell us in the comments down below. The lens does not need to be fast, since traditionally street photographers have used aperture like f5.6 and f8. If you want a different look, you can of course use a wider aperture. Fast lenses fully open are not recommended though. A narrow depth of field might hide the surroundings. And the surroundings are usually what we want in a street photograph. Stopping down to f5.6 will be a better choice in my opinion. And then let's talk about my approach. I mostly use the observer method and no people street photography styles. This image for example. I waited for someone to ride a bike but I was rewarded with the someone taking the bike up the stairs. That was something that I did not expect. I had everything set up and just waited. I think the composition, the moment and the tones are perfect. It ticks all the boxes for me. Another photo I like is this one. I saw the composition and the family appeared to make the image whole. Without the people it would be nothing. I have also a long-term photography project called Traces of Humans. That is my no people street photography approach. I like to photograph things that have been left behind and can be odd. The things is not supposed to be there. Before I talk a few words about the ethics and laws regarding street photography, I have a question for you. What is your approach? How much do you do street photography? 
please tell us in the comments down below. The ethics and laws. It is essential to understand that different countries have different laws about photographing people in public. When photographing in a foreign country, ensure you know what is legal and what is not. Some countries have strict photography rules if there are people in the photos. Make sure you know what it is, what is legal and what is not. If you want to learn more about street photography, here are seven tips that would help you to improve your skills in street photography. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.